Welcome to week two, module two, where we will begin exploration of Watson's Caritas. Keeping in mind the orange, the core and trim model that we discussed in module one, let's take a closer look at the core of caring professional practice, the 10 Caritas that are represented by the nutrient sections of the orange. We'll start with Caritas practices one through four. Here's Caritas 1. It's embracing altruistic values and practicing loving kindness with yourself and others. Loving kindness is not a style of behavior to be consistently modeled. It's an attitude, an intention, a stance. It's the will to love and care in whatever ways are meaningful and helpful within a given moment, within a given situation. It will look different for every person and every situation. The temperament of the practitioner, the temperament of the client, and other situation-specific factors will influence what the outward expression of caring will look like, while the inner resolve of the practitioner to care and to love remains constant. Intent to care, consistently adopting a caring stance in each situation, is what's critical. Here's a brief but powerful mindfulness activity that you can use throughout your workday. In any new situation, breathe in and resolve to cultivate compassion in the moment. Breathe out into the present moment and see what is here now and what possibilities and challenges present themselves. Breathe in to touch your compassionate center once more and then take action. Let's talk about Watson's second Caritas. This one is about authentic presence, instilling faith and hope, and honoring others. Examples of this caritas include cultivating openness and awareness in relation to the practices and beliefs of others that are different from yours. Developing the ability to be fully present and aware of what instills faith and hope in others will help you to support social, emotional, spiritual, and physical wellness in families, individuals, and groups who demonstrate a wide range of structures, beliefs, and practices that you may not understand, but that you can still demonstrate caring when working with. Here's a mindfulness practice that will support authentic presence. Breathe in and know that you are breathing in. Focus your awareness in the present moment. Breathe out into the present moment and see what's here and now and what possibilities and challenges present themselves. Breathe in and touch your fully present center and then act. The gist of this caritas is to be here right now in this moment in order to cultivate faith, hope, and to help others feel attended to and honored. Can you think of any ways to be fully present for your clients and coworkers? This simple act will transform your perceptions and actions because you will see, be seeing, assessing, and acting upon what is rather than what was or what might be. Caritas 3 is about being sensitive to yourself and others by nurturing individual beliefs and practices. Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, Self-understanding and self-love provide the foundation for understanding and loving other people. This first step is going home to ourselves, taking care of ourselves, understanding ourselves, accepting ourselves, and being compassionate to ourselves. Cultivating an inner practice of some sort that supports sensitivity in the inner lives of yourself and others is crucial in developing full awareness of yourself and others. Here's another brief mindfulness approach to try. Breathe in and resolve to cultivate inner sensitivity in the moment. Breathe out into the present moment and see what is here now and what possibilities and challenges present themselves. Breathe in and touch your inner center once more and then act. This brief moment of mindful effort will refocus your attention and open new perspectives related to enabling caring in any given moment or environment. This Caritas talks about nurturing individual beliefs and practices, so let's clarify what that means within the context of mindful caring. Spiritual practices can mean a number of things depending on the individual. The key, regardless of the type of spiritual inner practice, is cultivation of mindful, patient, compassionate curiosity in relation to yourself and others. 
Engaging in simple curiosity rather than drawing immediate conclusions opens possibilities and cultivates understanding and compassion that would not have been possible otherwise. Here's an example of how cultivating curiosity might unfold. A coworker tells you that she dislikes a unit manager. You say little and walk away because you happen to truly like and respect the manager, and initially you feel anger and defensive about that comment, but you decide to let it go and cultivate some curiosity. Over the next few weeks, you quietly observe, with unfettered curiosity, the interaction between the unit manager and the coworker who made the negative remarks. You find that the coworker bites her lip and nervously fidgets whenever she talks to the unit manager. The coworker also comments repeatedly that she is afraid she'll make a mistake and the unit manager will be harsh with her. You make a conscious effort to mentor and support the coworker. You draw her into non-threatening conversations with the unit manager so that she can become more familiar with the unit manager as a person. After a few weeks, the coworker seems more at ease and mentions that she's beginning to like the unit manager after all. Cultivating curiosity provides calm, clear openings to positive possibilities in challenging situations. Consistent, mindful, compassion-based spiritual practice includes the cultivation of curiosity and is the foundation for caring, compassion, and genuine connection. Let's talk about Caritas IV. It's about developing, helping, trusting, caring relationships. Watson writes, Authentic, caring relationship building is concerned with deepening our own humanity. It's about the process of becoming more humane, compassionate, aware, and awake to our own and others' human dilemma. We are called to abandon you and me and think in favor of we and us. If your thinking and speech reflect mindfulness and compassion within a we and us approach, has the power to restore communication, offer confidence, and nurture reconciliation. Here's a brief mindfulness activity to support helping, trusting, caring. Breathe in and resolve to cultivate your trust of yourself and others. Breathe out into the present moment and see the challenges and possibilities. Breathe in with a sincere intent to cultivate trust. Then act. Here's one example of how everyday practice of this caritas might look. Several years ago, I did a small research study about effective nursing interventions. I had observed an occupational health nurse at a local hospital. This nurse assessed the workstations of hospital employees to see if improvements could be made to avoid medical conditions related to poorly designed workstations, you know, like carpal tunnel syndrome or, you know, neck stiffness. This nurse had an unusually high success rate related to compliance and decreased pain and injury in the clients that she served, and I wanted to see what she did when she interacted with clients. I wondered if caring behaviors had something to do with her success. I suspected that I might see warm, friendly, conversational type approach, because at this time in my career, I equated caring with this type of behavior, and I believed that if it didn't exist, then true caring could not occur. Well, I was wrong. Results of this study showed that in this case, clients expressed that they felt cared for and inclined towards following prescribed interventions because the nurse paid focused and in-the-moment attention to them through mirroring, eye contact, and verbal validation of whatever concerns they presented. The average time required for these caring exchanges was 24 minutes, but some of them were as short as six minutes. The results were notable in that this nurse did not ever touch the client directly, nor did she engage in casual conversational banter during any of the observed interventions. She didn't display a lot of personal warmth or a high level of friendliness. The primary features of every observed exchange were mindfulness, immediacy, and a palpable sense of being wholly attentive and firmly present for each client in that moment. There was a strong sense of, I am here for you right now in this moment, and I will do my best as we work through this together. 
I learned a really valuable lesson after completing that study and it has guided and informed my subsequent personal and professional life. Caring, love, and trust are best sustained through intention, presence, attentiveness, immediacy, and mindfulness. Friendliness, warmth, and maternal affection may be components of transpersonal caring moments, but they aren't necessities. This point can be particularly helpful to remember when working with people who don't respond well to warmth or affection or friendliness, or maybe when you just don't feel like being warm or friendly that day. You can still be mindful and you can still be caring if you're there, totally present, and working with people and paying attention to what they need.